Thank you for joining us for our monthly webinar series from Local Market Monitor, where we take a closer look at this month's National Economic Outlook, which was written by Local Market Monitor's President Inga Windsor. For those of you that don't know Ingo, he has been analyzing real estate markets for over 30 years and is a graduate of MIT and Boston University. He's not your typical economist and has a knack for taking complex data, extracting what is important, and providing unique insights and tangible guidance on real estate markets. So with that, I bring you Ingo and his insights on the economy. Thanks very much, Carolyn. Our goal in reviewing the economy every month is to get some insight into the dynamics that influence real estate markets in both the short and the longer term. In previous recessions, it's been possible to see trends develop fairly early. So we had some idea how real estate markets would be affected and how long that might last. Going back to the 2008 recession, for example, it was plain that spending, the lack of it, was the big problem. On this chart, you see re retail sales in blue and jobs in red. You could see way back in early 2007 that spending was stalling and that job growth was slowing. It was clear there would be a recession, although we didn't know how deep it would be. And because we already knew that homes were heavily overpriced in many markets, we also knew a long period of falling home prices was ahead. In 2020, the situation is entirely different because now it's not economic factors that drive this recession, it's the pandemic. And because jobs are now the big worry, not spending. Spending took a big hit, down 20% in April, but the surprising rebound in spending is only associated with a modest rebound in jobs so far. Now, I'm not convinced that spending will continue on this positive pathway. The large amount of stimulus provided by the federal government will apparently not be renewed. But even if spending does not take another plunge, the problem of jobs isn't going away soon because the pandemic isn't going away. And even when it does, it will leave behind changes that permanently alter the economy and the demand for housing. For real estate, this very simply means that more and more people will become renters at a time there already isn't enough suitable rental housing. That's not a new insight, but I'm pretty sure it's both a short and long-term reality. So far, we know little about the homeowner market. Reliable home price data for the second quarter won't show up until later this month. But for homeowners also, a lot will depend on how quickly jobs return. So let's have a look at the details of the current job situation. This chart shows the percent increase or decrease in total jobs in the national economy compared to the same month of the previous year. In the last recession, the loss of jobs bottomed out at 5%. We could get back to that level fairly soon as more business activity opens up, but the situation in the various job sectors will show us why swift recovery after that is not very likely. Here are manufacturing jobs. These jobs were already in poor shape before the recession, as you can see. Now some jobs will come back from abroad, but more and more automation will limit long-term job gains. Retail jobs were already in tough shape because of online shopping, which will continue to take a larger share of business. As an aside, note that jobs for online retailers like Amazon are included in the figures on this chart. Online retailing is just much more labor efficient. Business services is one of the engines of the economy and is probably the best barometer for what we can expect for the future. So far, recovery in this sector has been slow. Healthcare jobs should recover fairly quickly as regular health care from doctors and dentists resumes, but there will be lingering effects as people avoid places where other people might be sick, and especially as hospitals cope with the very large loss of revenue from the pandemic. Finance, one of the most computerized industries, has been little affected. This is important for real estate because people with jobs in finance are homeowners. At restaurants, we see the most dramatic effects of the recession. Note that the scale of this chart is three times bigger than the other charts. It's very likely that fewer people will visit restaurants for years to come. And even when they do, there will probably be fewer restaurant workers. Local governments have lost vast amounts of revenue in this recession and will have no choice but to cut back their operations. Again, 
this will last years. Here's my personal guide for how long the recession will last. Computer systems jobs should be immune from recession as companies want more and more automation. But even these well-paid jobs are being cut. To finish, let me plug our two products that are designed for investors in rental property. The investors metro analysis shows the economic situation in any of 200 metro areas and what that means for investing strategies. How much to pay shows you rent data in local zip codes. They're even more useful in times of uncertainty like right now. You can get more information and buy them directly at our website. Thanks for following along. This is our national economic outlook. I'm Inga Windsor.